With the current reboot of the Modern Warfare trilogy hopefully coming to an end, I decided to head back to a time where Activision cared more about their fans instead of selling a 21 Savage skin for about 20 quid. I decided to head back to 2007. This would not only be the year that the original Modern Warfare was released, but it also started what would be considered one of the best trilogies in Call of Duty history. To grab all three Platinums, there's 153 trophies to earn, split into 51 per game with Modern Warfare 3 being the hardest at a 7 out of 10 difficulty I need my love. Bro. and Modern Warfare 2 being the easiest at a 4 out of 10 difficulty. I want to give a massive thank you to all the new and current members of the channel as you guys are all truly amazing and help fund the games I platinum within these videos. And if you do want to keep up to date with all things content related, be sure to check out the Discord if you have some spare time. And with all of that out of the way, get comfy, grab some snacks and enjoy this massive nostalgia trip down memory lane. And the bad news? We've got a new guy joining us today. Fresh out of selection. His name's Soap. Right at the start of Modern Warfare 1, we are chucked into the mission FNG, which serves as a tutorial-like mission while taking on the role of someone called John McTavish, better known as Soap. Eventually, we meet up with Captain Price and are tasked with completing a training course to see which difficulty is fit for us. Now, this doesn't really matter too much because we have to play on Veteran for the Platinum anyways, but what does matter is beating Infinity Ward's best time of 15.1 seconds for two trophies. And let me tell you now, this took a few tries. I managed to knock out the first trophy called New Squadron Record pretty early on because it only requires a time of 19 seconds or less. Oh, that was a good one, that was a good one. I might have been, okay, position. that was one trophy, that nice, nice, nice. But beating the entire course in less than 15 seconds would prove to be a much harder challenge than I thought. Target. Nice, Flash that might have been it, that might have been it. Hit the target. Oh my Final god. Position. But eventually, I got the technique down and destroyed the 15.1 second time limit. The Flash break through the door. Position oh, four. Hit the target. Position five, it. go. Hit the target. Six, go. Oh, there we go. That wall came in clutch, mate. Moving on to the next mission, we are chucked into a cargo ship hunting for intel tipped off from an anonymous source. There's multiple trophies to be earned here, but the first one can be earned pretty quickly for eliminating an enemy while flashed. Nice, daredevil. This is also the same location where we can find the first collectible of the game. These really don't serve any purpose other than being an actual collectible, so I won't bore you guys by showing every single one. There will be a trophy a bit later into this video for collecting half of them and, again, for collecting every single one. For now though, we can make our way down to the lower decks before getting jumped by an enemy holding a deagle. This is important because the deagle is only available in this mission, and not only goes towards the trophy weapons master for eliminating an enemy with every weapon in the game, but after eliminating five Five enemies with a deagle also earns us a trophy Desert Storm. Nice, Desert Storm. No rest for the weary is up next and requires you to knife an enemy that is crawling to safety. This is actually pretty hard given the fact that we are on veteran difficulty because I believe the enemies die just as fast as you do and the method for getting this trophy is to shoot an enemy in the leg and then it will start crawling away. I tried so many times with this one and I was considering coming back later on recruit before for some reason one of the enemies just randomly started crawling and the trophy was mine pretty soon after. Oh he's crawling. Yes! Now that these three trophies have been earned, it was time to restart the mission and do the entire thing again, but this time without shooting my weapon once. This actually wasn't as hard as it sounds because the AI do a pretty good job at eliminating the enemies for you. But the one trophy that did stump me for a bit was three of a kind, as it requires you to knife three enemies in a row. What seemed to work for me was running around the side of the crates and flashing a group of enemies, which luckily was just the right number of enemies I needed for the trophy. This is it, this is it. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, cool. With that out of the way, we can find the intel at the end of the ship before the entire thing gets blown to pieces and we are tasked with escaping alive. This section has no enemies in it, so it was just a beeline straight to the helicopter to earn a few trophies. One for not reloading, one for using knife only, and another one for beating the mission on veteran. Nice, Master Ninja, nice. Oh, and another one, what the hell? The next mission is just a quick interactive cutscene which has us taken on the role of Al Fulani, the Saudi Arabian president, as he is captured and then assassinated on live TV by Al-Assad. We also get a glimpse at Imran Zakayev here, who is someone we will meet with again very shortly. <laughs> this 
This pretty much sends a message around the entire world not to mess with al-Assad, but according to Captain Price, the Americans are trying their best to handle the situation in the correct way. In the meantime, we are tasked with rescuing an individual called Nikolai. We arrived at a location, grabbing some intel, and also eliminating an enemy with a claymore to slowly chip away at the weapons master trophy. Pretty soon after this, we meet up with a few soldiers and make our way to Nikolai, eventually earning a trophy for getting four headshots in a row. Nice, four of a kind, four headshots. With the only miscellaneous trophy now out of the way, we can rappel down this wall to finally reach Nikolai and save him from the Russians. It's him. Nikolai, are you all right? Can you walk? Have the Americans already attacked Al-Assad? No, their invasion begins in a few hours. Why? The Americans are making mistakes. They will never take Al-Assad alive. The mission Charlie Don't Surf is up next, and it's a pretty important one for numerous reasons. But mainly, we are here as the Americans trying to take down Al-Assad for good. After landing safely, we can breach through this door to enter a room filled with random assault rifles, pistols, and an RPG. This is where we can rack up a few more kills for the Weapons Master Trophy, but also start the trophy Your Show Sucks for shooting every TV showing Al-Assad's speech. I think there's at least 50 TVs in this level, and they're all scattered around in random locations. So after grabbing an RPG and blowing up this car to eliminate two enemies, enemies. We can head on over to the TV station, which is where the vast majority of TVs are located. And after a pretty brutal fight between us and Al-Assad's men, we can destroy the remaining TVs within this room. We pressed on and eventually approached the room which Al-Assad was reported to be inside of, before breaching through and realizing it was just a pre-recorded speech being played to all the TVs in the area. So, while we didn't catch the guy responsible for killing a bunch of innocent people, we did get to shoot the last few TVs for a trophy. And then earned another one for completing the mission on Veteran. In the next mission, our squad is deployed to assist one of our tanks stuck in the middle of a battle. And this is where I earned a very random trophy for saving the life of one of our teammates. A little bit later into the same mission, we reach this section with a bunch of enemies on a bridge and eventually four tanks would arrive to aid the enemy team in their mission. But if we manage to stop all four tanks with a few javelin shots, we can earn another trophy. And then we can finally make it to the tank caught in the middle of a battle. I don't really get why they chose to just send our squad out instead of a few of us, but after clearing out all the enemies in the surrounding area, we can finish this mission off once and for all. Taking on a roll of soap once again, we start this mission just after saving Nikolai from the Russians and our helicopter being blown to pieces. This, in my opinion, is one of the hardest missions in this game and you'll soon see why. For now though, we can head forward before stumbling across a farmer being harassed by what I believe to be Russian soldiers. And then finally, being introduced to probably the worst thing this game chucks at us, an aimbotting helicopter. This guy does not stop shooting and to make things worse, killing the person in the helicopter only ends up spawning another one. So there's literally no way to avoid this other than taking cover wherever possible. There is a house at the end of this mission that has a rocket launcher primed and ready for an attack, but it seemed like the hardest part of this mission was far from over. Oh my god, man. Grab another stinger, oh my god, bro. I did end up finding a solid spot to finally drop this helicopter from the sky. Please. Yes! Bloody nice shooting Fucking this Fucking finally, up. man. That's actually probably the hardest thing I've done so far in this game. But after escorting my team to the extraction point, I was greeted with a cutscene and not a single trophy popped. Instead, we are chucked into a random AC-130 and a task of protecting our team from harm. While doing so, I accidentally earned another trophy for eliminating five enemies with one shot. Uh, we got a runner here. 
And then after completing this mission, earned two more trophies for completing the last two missions on Veteran and another one for just completing the mission. Before being chucked straight back into the bog, like nothing ever happened, we are tasked with escorting the tank through the town. But before that, we can earn the only miscellaneous trophy of this mission for shooting down three enemies repelling from a helicopter. To be fair, this can be done in other missions and actually might be a bit easier doing it elsewhere. But I just wanted to get this one done and out of the way as it was only possible in a few missions. With this trophy done, the only thing left to do was escort the tank through the town. And while this was pretty difficult, it was nothing compared to the helicopter mission we just went through. So I managed to wrap this one up after a few tries. Still in the process of capturing Al-Assad, we are placed into a chopper and are tasked with mowing down a bunch of enemies. Because these bullets are actually explosive, it was pretty easy to rack up enough explosive kills to earn the trophy Explosive Man for blowing up 20 enemies. And then, pretty much straight after this, we can find the 15th intel, which not only marks the halfway point, but also earns us a trophy, Look Sharp. Oh, all right? Out of here. We then get overrun with enemies, and after fending off as many as possible, reach the chopper to end this mission. Or, so I thought. Once in the sky, our allies in the other chopper get shot down, and before I was even able to process what was going on, we landed in the middle of nowhere to save the pilot from the enemies. It is revealed a bit later into the story that this nuke ended up killing 30,000 soldiers and we later find out who actually dropped this nuke in the first place. But for now, we awake from the crash to witness the aftermath of the bombing before blacking out and saying goodbye to the world once and for all. Still frantically searching for Al-Assad's whereabouts, we are tipped off yet again by Nikolai about a safe house that Al-Assad uses from time to time, which just makes you wonder why he didn't tell us about this to begin with. But anyways, we take the role of soap, and this is where the most BS system I've ever seen a game do for a harder difficulty presented itself. So while searching for Al-Assad, we have to clear out these houses that are filled with his men. The issue is though, these enemies just keep respawning no matter what. I could sit here for half an hour shooting these enemies and they'd still be respawning like it's a normal thing to do. I did eventually figure out that once you're in the house, the respawning does stop, but it really does add a level of difficulty to this mission that really just doesn't make any sense. Either way, after sweeping every house, it turns out Al-Assad isn't in any of them, but instead, he's actually in the barn right at the back of the map. Who was that, sir? Zakayev. Imran Zakayev. With Imran Zakayev now being properly introduced into the story, we are taken back to 15 years ago as Captain Price, where we can follow Captain McMillan as we try to sneak into Pripyat to assassinate Zakayev. This mission and the next one are linked together and hold quite a lot of trophies within a short amount of time. The first one we can get is for alerting an enemy helicopter and taking it down, which was just as hard as it was the last time, but at least this time, we do get a trophy for doing so. And then we just have to sneak through the entire level without alerting a single person. Look at this place. 50,000 people used to live in the city. Now I said a lot. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. 50,000 people used to live here. Move. There you go, Gilly's in the mist. Now that we had made it through without being spotted, we can set up camp and wait for Zakayev and his men to arrive. It is here that we can get a very cool easter egg slash trophy for assassinating a future villain of the Modern Warfare trilogy, Makarov, to essentially end the story right here and eliminate the need for the next two games. This trophy wasn't in the original game and Makarov isn't even here in the original version either, but due to some events that you'll see a bit later into Modern Warfare 3, having Makarov here is just a really cool easter egg to have in the remaster. Oh, 
Nice, there we go. Time paradox. I'm not too sure if you caught it because it was carefully slipped into the dialogue, but we only managed to shoot Zakaev's arm off rather than actually eliminating him. So to be honest, this entire assassination attempt was just a waste of time. After running past all the enemies in the area, we can eventually reach this section with a dog that allows us to grab two trophies. One for surviving a dog attack. Nice, down boy down finally. And another one for restarting the checkpoint and knifing the same dog 20 times. We eventually get into a situation where Captain McMillan gets injured and we have no choice but to carry him to safety. This beginning section really isn't too bad, but once we get to the X-Fill location, there is about four minutes where the game requires you to hold the area down and survive while we wait for the chopper. This, in my opinion, is up there with the aimbot chopper as one of the worst missions in this game. Oh my god, I would, I would absolutely scream that I should have gone crazy. Fucking hell. Oh my days, don't even bother. Oh. And to make it even harder, one of the intel pieces needed for the trophy was locked behind a door that only opened about halfway through the section. Meaning not only did I have to survive the aimbotting enemies, but I also had to wait for the door to open, eliminate more enemies that spawned out of the door, and then finally grab the intel, which was the last thing I needed for the mission. Then, after holding the enemies off a little bit longer, we could finally grab Macmillan to leave the area once and for all. Oh, please, 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 please. Oh, you're taking a piss, you're taking a piss. Please tell me I'm just invincible, please. Thank fuck, man. Back to the present now, Zakaev's men are still under the assumption that we have Al-Assad alive and held captive, so they are out to get him back in one piece. While preparing for their attack, we can enter this church and find a weapon stash conveniently placed at the top, and after using all the rockets on the enemies, earn the trophy, the man in the high tower. This should be the trophy. Nice. There's a few trophies to earn in this mission, and the next two can be worked on together. While eliminating all of Zakaev's men, we can also shoot down five choppers in the sky. And just after this section, we can grab this RPG conveniently placed on the ground and shoot down the remaining three choppers to unlock not only bird on the ground for shooting a helicopter with an RPG. It's the right, so fuck's oh, sake, man. I have to redo that. Also, fly swatter for eliminating all eight helicopters in this mission. This should be another trophy now. Nice, that's all the miscellaneous trophies done now. There wasn't really anything else to do in this mission other than escape to the X-Fill Zone alive, which seemed to be a common theme with literally every single mission in this game. Even though we didn't get a trophy for this mission, we would get two for the next one, so I pressed on, taking out a few enemies and going undercover to get the jump on Zakaev's son. This didn't really work out too well, and we enter a pretty big chase sequence across multiple streets and buildings, before reaching the roof to finally catch up with his son. No way. Third horseman. With the loss of his son, Zakaev orders all US and British forces to leave Russia immediately or suffer the consequences, something that Captain Price and the team don't really seem to understand. As in the next mission, we are trying to take back a launch facility to stop Zakaev nuking the world. We sneak through a good chunk of the section before we blow up this radio tower and have no choice but to shoot our way through the remaining enemies to witness probably the last thing we wanted to see happening. Good to see you guys made it. We'll give you sniper cover once you're inside the perimeter. What the hell is that? Oh, uh, we got a problem here. It is revealed that if we can't grab the launch codes to stop this nuke, it's going to eliminate 41 million civilians, and of course, we can't let that happen. 
So we stormed the facility, blowing up tanks and grabbing a few pieces of intel before clearing up the remaining enemies and heading down into the vent shafts to stop this nuke once and for all. It's here that we can slowly but surely push back the enemies holding down the facility while constantly being reminded that if we don't get there in time, it will result in 41 million deaths. With only two minutes remaining on the clock, we can breach the wall connected to the launch control room and after eliminating all the enemies inside, can quickly grab the trophy eyes and ears for collecting all intel. Here we go, last intel I believe. Lovely stuff, eyes and ears and then stop the nuke by blowing it up in the sky, sending all the pieces into the ocean. We also find out that Zakaev is escaping up on the surface, so after making our way back through the facility, we can take a few vehicles to escape and earn a few trophies for doing so. This seemed like pretty good news until I realized that the next mission links directly to the one we just did, and we are now escaping from Zakaev's men. I found this really hard to begin with and died countless times before realizing that you can just crouch in the vehicle and this made the mission 10 times easier. Now that we were stranded on the bridge, we could grab the last weapon needed for the trophy Weapons Master, as this mission contains the final weapon in the game. But after figuring out exactly which enemy had the weapon and killing a few enemies with it, of course, it was just my luck that this trophy didn't pop. I decided there really wasn't much I could do right now, so I just focused up on getting this mission done before the bridge gets bombed yet again, this time taking me and Captain Price down with it. Oh, what? Bro, I actually thought I was the end then. Oh shit, we gotta take him out. No way. Let's fucking go, man. Slammed. You are going to be alright, my friend. No way. Shit, I don't know. It's Captain Price dead. Nice. So, with the story now wrapped up, there was only two trophies remaining, Weapons Master and Mile High Club. I decided to try and get Weapons Master out of the way first because I was more than sure I'd have to replay the entire game again just to get this done. But after messing around with the Deagle and getting nothing, I tried the Charlie Don't Surf mission that has all the weapons laid out on the table. And to my surprise, the weapon I was actually missing was just my secondary for this mission, the M9, and not some random gun from some other random mission. Oh my god, why was it the M9, bro? With that trophy cleared up, we just had to beat Mile High Club on Veteran. If you're unfamiliar with this mission, it is probably one of the most infamous missions in this game due to how hard it is. You're tasked with making it through this entire plane in 60 seconds. Okay, I can see how this, this could be kind of hard. For sure. The reason this is so hard is due to how many enemies are just in random corners and most of them are just head glitching behind chairs, which makes it really hard to eliminate them. I died multiple times here and believe me, it is a pretty hard mission, but it's all about figuring out exactly where the enemies spawn and what weapons drop when killing certain enemies. The P90 is a godsend for this mission and after eliminating the two enemies at the start of the map, one of them conveniently drops his weapon for you. You can then push forward until you reach this corridor section and after waiting for the plane to break open, Open, you can flash the remaining enemies to get rid of them quickly. Heading up the stairs, you can also flash these guys too for a few easy kills and then flash this last corridor to finally reach the VIP. Fucking slapped, absolutely slapped. Holy shit. Okay. Bro's not picking his, he's not moving his face. I'm gonna shoot him. That's it, that's the platinum. Yes, let's go. Just another day at the office. 
So with Modern Warfare 1 now wrapped up, it was time to head into Modern Warfare 2, which in my opinion is probably the best in the trilogy. Just like Modern Warfare 1's FNG mission, we are chucked into a mission called SSDD and we can grab our first trophy pretty much instantly for grabbing the sniper rifle and shooting all three clowns hidden around the starting area. One clown here. Is that the right one? Not there. There's one more clown somewhere. There is. We go, clown in train, and that is our first trophy of the game. We can then grab another quick trophy for killing General Shepard right here, stopping all future events of the game, which is kind of like the Makarov trophy they added into Modern Warfare 1. Only shooting him here gives you a trophy. There you go. And then again, just like in Modern Warfare 1, there is a training course to be completed and you have to beat two times for two different trophies. The first and easiest time is 30 seconds. Quick! That's one trophy, I think. Very nice. Man. Pit boss. So that was 30 seconds, but that was um, okay, a very, very poor run. So. And the second one is 19.1 seconds, which took me so many tries, I ended up watching a guide to figure out the best route. Oh my god, this is it. Oh my god, this is it. Oh my god. Go, 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 go. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. And then we can head into the story by choosing veteran difficulty and earn the trophy for completing the tutorial. We start our first proper mission by being chucked into the battlefield by General Shepard, defending the bridge from an attack. It is here that we can grab the trophy threesome for blowing up three enemies with a single shot from a grenade launcher. I also want to point out quickly that this game does not have a Weapons Master trophy, but does contain the same intel collectible that, again, doesn't really serve any purpose other than being an actual collectible. Eventually, we save the bridge from an attack, blowing up this building and then getting swarmed by enemies, which leaves no other option but to crawl into this building for safety. Conveniently placed inside this building is an array of weapons, which serves as one of the earliest and best opportunities to get the trophy Desperado for killing five enemies in a row with different weapons. I then accidentally restarted this entire mission, but once making it back to the same spot, I saw the perfect opportunity to end this guy's life with a grenade to the face. With all the trophies for this first mission cleared up, we can make it through this school and eventually reach Shepard at the end to become a member of his squad. We get our first official mention of Makarov before we take on the role of Roach in Task Force 141 as we sneak through the enemy base with soap trying to retrieve the ACS module. The first playthrough of this mission has to be done in stealth to obtain the trophy's ghost for planting the C4 without alerting enemies and a real gun game for completing the mission without reloading. To be honest, these were actually pretty easy, even on veteran, but the beginning bit of this area did take a few tries. However, I made my way through and eventually placed the C4 without alerting a single enemy. No kills, no arrests. Impressive, Roach. And then, after making it back to Soap, we can grab the ACS module hooked up to their systems before Soap gets ambushed and we have to blow up the C4s as an escape plan. In this situation, I couldn't really use my weapons, so I just let Soap do a quick sweep and then ran through the remaining enemies, which somehow worked even on veteran difficulty. We then got access to a snowmobile and are tasked with making it back to the exfil zone in one piece. This section isn't too bad, but the weapon we are given automatically reloads, voiding the trophy right there and then. So essentially, we had to make it back to the exfil without shooting our weapon once, while on the hardest difficulty, which pretty much went exactly as you would expect, but eventually the exfil zone was within our reach, earning us the trophy for not reloading, and then two trophies for beating the mission because I also completed it on veteran. Trophy for not reloading, I believe. Yeah, the real gun game, nice. As far as one for All that was left to do now was to restart this mission again, knifing an enemy without being seen. There we go. And then while on the snowmobile, eliminate 20 enemies before reaching the exfil zone. Ah. 
So the next mission in this game is no Russian. And if you know anything about this mission, you'll know that showing the beginning section is probably a fast pass to get age restricted. But essentially, we take on the role of an undercover American spy that has somehow gotten close with Makarov's gang. We go to a Russian airport and mow down all the innocent civilians. This mission is skippable and therefore has no trophies tied to it. But once the SWAT team arrives to stop us from eliminating any more civilians, we can steal a riot shield and grab the trophy Unnecessary Roughness for eliminating an enemy with it. After making it through the remainder of the SWAT team, we can reach the exit vehicle with Makarov to escape the airport in one piece. Or so I thought. Attack, Makarov. That was no message. <laughs> this is a message. No way. The Americans thought he could deceive us. When they find that body, all of Russia will cry for war. So as it turns out, Makarov knew we were the spy the entire time and leaving us to die at the airport means that the Russians automatically assumed that the Americans were behind the attack rather than Makarov. And it was now Roach and Soap's job to prove that the Americans were innocent. We link the bullet casings from the shooting to a shell maker in Brazil and head over there to figure out exactly where he is located. After dealing with, in my opinion, one of the worst maps in this veteran campaign because the enemies literally spawn everywhere, we can catch up with Rojas and Soap takes him down WWE style. No, Bollocks, the skies are clear. Send the chopper now. Command's got their head up their ass. We're on our own. Due to a glitch in the system, the enemies were able to get through undetected and we are now all the way in USA, taking on the role of Ramirez. This mission is actually pretty cool and one that, in my opinion, really does separate itself from the rest. There's multiple trophies to be earned here and after ditching our vehicle to progress on foot, we eventually make it to the main center of restaurants. This whole section is pretty much free roam and you're able to enter any restaurant you please while defending yourself from the enemies. Because of this, we can grab a few pieces of intel straight away before getting cornered on this rooftop with the only real weapon at our disposal being this thermal M14. After eliminating six enemies with this weapon, we can earn an unexpected trophy. Before getting ambushed by a bunch of enemies and two BTRs, which can be taken down pretty fast for another trophy. The last remaining trophy in this section is called 10 plus footmobiles for getting 10 eliminations with the Predator missile. I think there's multiple missions this is possible in, but I ended up unlocking this one here while defending Burger Town from waves of enemies. Before we are eventually saved by a convoy for the trophy Royale with Cheese. I know this is kind of confusing, but we are now back with Soap again, just after capturing Rojas. Since we don't need Rojas anymore, he can just stay tied up forever while we go ahead and attempt to reach the x location. I don't really know how I did this, but while eliminating all the enemies in the area, I managed to kill two enemies with a single bullet, unlocking a trophy. And then, we can progress a bit further into the level before grabbing these akimbo SMGs to try and kill 10 enemies in a row. This was actually very hard, not only because of the difficulty, but because you just can't aim in while using akimbo weapons, which made it kind of impossible to shoot long range. I spent most of my time just camping behind walls and cars, chipping away at the health of a few enemies, before this trophy ended up popping on one of the last enemies of the area. Within the exact same area, there's also another miscellaneous trophy for killing 7 chickens in 10 seconds. This is super easy with a few grenades, so after clearing the area of enemies, the trophy was mine pretty soon after. And then, we just had to make it through the last few areas on the map, grabbing another piece of intel and jumping across rooftops to reach the chopper for an exfil. Even though we had just messed up the jump, I don't think the enemies are able to kill you here, so all we had to do was run to the chopper to earn the mission related trophy.
Back to Ramirez once again, we are defending America from the Russians and this is probably the worst mission in the game just due to how boring it is. There's a miscellaneous trophy to be earned here for instructing the honey badger, which is the massive vehicle, to kill 80 enemies, but this entire thing is just 10 times longer than it needs to be. The tank moves super slow and there's barely any cover to protect yourself from the aimbotting enemies. About halfway through this section, a few helicopters swoop in to drop a few enemies and just like in Modern Warfare 1, we can earn a trophy for shooting them as they're repelling down. And a bit after this, we also grab the trophy for getting 80 kills with the honey badger. Just to save some time, I'm not going to showcase this entire mission because it is literally just escorting a tank for a solid 25 minutes. But right at the end of the mission, it turns out the guy we did this entire mission for has been killed, and the entire thing was just a massive waste of time. No sign of forced entry. Ramirez, get that briefcase. What's left of it? Prisoner 627. We believe that's who Makarov's got the mad on for, but we can't get to him. So with Prisoner 627 held up in the Gulag, we divert our attention to the oil rigs just outside the perimeter as they are occupied by the Russians. I actually like this mission quite a lot due to the stealth aspect, but also because we can get a few trophies out of the way. After emerging from the water and taking out a few guards, we can do a slow-mo breach and eliminate four enemies for a trophy. And pretty much straight after this, we can find a 20-second piece of intel, which marks the halfway point for the collectibles. We can do another breach here, which eventually results in us setting up a C4 trap for a few unsuspecting enemies. Once this blows up, all the enemies in the oil rig become aware of our position. And from this point forward, we can no longer walk around in stealth. This also prompts a helicopter to spawn in, and if we somehow do the impossible, taking it out with a grenade, we can earn another trophy. At this point, all the miscellaneous trophies are out of the way, so we can just sprint to the last breach of the mission, taking out all the Russian soldiers carefully so that we don't blow up the C4. After this, we can exfil and head straight to the Gulag to extract Prisoner 627, to stay one step ahead of Makarov. We are pretty much moving through the Gulag blind, while Ghost assesses the cells to see exactly where the prisoner is located. There's a few major fights here, and at one point, we get locked in a room waiting for Ghost to open the cell door. Once we are given the exact location, we can make our way down into what most of us know know as the Gulag. I never played Modern Warfare 2 on release and to see the Gulag here after knowing it primarily from Warzone is actually pretty cool, but it didn't mean the section would be easy. A few deaths occurred here before I decided to sprint through in hopes that I would trigger a checkpoint, eventually reaching the breach that would lead us to Prisoner 627. No fucking way. This belongs to you, sir. With the gang back together, we grab another piece of intel for escaping the gulag once and for all. Hang on! Yes! With the war between the US and Russia reaching an all-time high, the civilians are ordered to evacuate the immediate area. And this is where we are chucked right back into the action as Ramirez. The task at hand is to secure the enemy lookout point on the fifth floor of this building. And to do that, we have to carefully move through a bunch of enemies. Once reaching the lookout point, we can eliminate all the enemies and grab the javelin to provide our team with some cover. And this is where we can start the trophy Bird Hunter for destroying 10 enemy helicopters. The issue with this one is that the game doesn't truly give you enough time to get all of them done, and it can be easily missed if you don't know what you're looking for. After dealing with the first set of choppers, you have to provide support on the ground, which then triggers another wave of them to spawn in. While doing all of this, there's also a few enemies that come in from behind, making this trophy kind of difficult, since your teammates never really do anything to help. On top of this, the game will eventually start a timer for evacuation, and this is where the trophy really becomes missable because you need to stay and shoot the remaining choppers for the trophy.
Dagger 2-1. We are going down at Grid Square. Papa Bravo. Dagger 2-1, this is Overlord. Do you copy? Over. Dagger 2-1, this is Overlord. How copy? Over. We luckily survived this crash, but before anything too crazy happens, the mission ends and we witness a disagreement between Shepard and Price. We can follow Price through this snowy environment, taking out the enemies carefully until we reach this slope before the enemy base. Sliding down this slope unlocks a trophy for not letting your Predator missile get destroyed, and I'm really not sure what else I would have done differently, so I don't really know how you can fail this trophy. With that trophy out of the way, all that was left to do was to reach the submarine at the end of the enemy base. I died not only to the stupidly placed enemies, but also to the aimbotting helicopter that once again came to join us. It was only when I realized that I still had my Predator missile to use that I was able to take down the chopper and the tank, blocking the way to the submarine. No way. Price is the bad guy. Casualties? Possibly 30 to 50,000. Depends on the exact location of the detonation. All systems will go down. Come in, Sap-1. This is ISS Control. Houston's requesting a feed from your helmet cam. Over. This is cool uh, as fuck, what the hell? Over towards the dark side of the Earth. Should be cresting the horizon about 15 degrees east of the starboard PV rays. There it is. Crazy, I love space, man. Space is one of like, the most fascinating things to me, so... Uh, are you getting this? This is very, very cool. Copy that, ISS. Oh, that was gotta be the missile that um, Captain Price fired, I guess. Houston, this is ISS... <laughs> With the nuke seemingly killing 50,000 people, we return back to Ramirez as we somehow just miss the explosion radius. This whole mission is pretty similar to the one mission from the last game in that we are exploring the aftermath of the explosion, only this time we do survive the nuke. Eventually, we stumble across the White House which in my opinion looks a lot better than I thought it would have done after meeting a nuke face to face. The main focus here though wasn't actually the White House but instead a little building to the left called Whiskey Hotel. The whole reason for choosing Whiskey Hotel in the first place was because because the higher levels were blasted open due to the nuke, making it a pretty easy spot for the chopper to land and get us out of the battlefield. These are the last safe havens left on Earth for Makarov and his men. Sounds like we gotta be in two places at once. Impossible? Not for the 141. 50-50 chance to take out Makarov, eh? Captain Price, request permission to take the safe house with Roach. Granted. Soap and I will take the boneyard in Afghanistan. With the team being split up into two, we take the safe house with Ghost and start the trophy Claymore for eliminating 11 enemies with the Claymores. This really isn't the easiest thing to do on Veteran because a lot of the time you would just die to your own Claymore and if it's not your Claymore then it's being one shot from an enemy rifle. I found the best way to approach this was to just spam Claymores when breaching through the doors, grabbing a few Claymore kills with each breach until all the runes were clear. While this wasn't enough to pop a trophy, we do find out that both the safe houses we are in and the other location with Soap and Price are full of weapons but neither contain Makarov. Price is pretty sure the intel was wrong, but Shepard is more concerned about getting all the information we can find. So we hook up to Makarov's computer and place a few claymores down in preparation for an attack. And of course, once all the enemies came flooding in, I managed to get the last few claymore kills for the trophy. It was just a case of surviving and holding the safe house down until the transfer of information was complete. We head over to the extraction point and get blown up by what I assume was a grenade, leading to Ghost dragging us to safety before this happens. You have the DSM. We've got it, sir. Good. That's one less loose end. No! Here 
area is sanitized. All targets destroyed. Solid copy. No movement detected. 2-6 going into holding pattern. So I took the liberty of doing a bit of googling when it came to why Shepard actually betrayed us in the first place. And essentially, Shepard was the person that tipped off Makarov about the American spy on his team drawing no Russian. This pretty much means that Shepard single-handedly caused World War 3 and the information we had just grabbed from Makarov's safe house would have told us this. Hence why Shepard had to get rid of Roach and Ghost. This is why Shepard and Makarov's men are now fighting each other because even though Shepard started it, he wants to be known as the war hero that saved World War 3 and he is currently trying to tie up all loose ends so that a secret is never revealed. Due to the enemies being so distracted with fighting each other, we are able to slip through pretty easily even on veteran and what surprised me quite a bit was that Price and Makarov were actually in discussion about Shepard's whereabouts. Makarov, you ever hear the old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Price, one day you're going to find that cuts both ways. Shepard is using Cider Hotel Bravo. You know where it is. I'll see you now. Looking forward to it. Give my regards to Zakayev if you get there first. With Shepard's last location now known, we can escape the scrapyard with Price for a trophy. We go forward like a breath exhaled from the earth, with vigor in our hearts and one goal in sight. We will kill him. With Soap and Price out for blood, we reach the last section of the game in search of Shepard, and it's pretty much just an uphill battle with Shepard's men, grabbing some intel as we go before reaching this breach with a room full of explosives. What's crazy to see is that Shepard is so set on taking both Soap and Price out that he's happy to detonate this entire room, whether or not his men are still trapped inside. Override the door control. Excalibur, this is Gold Eagle. Fire mission. Target package Romeo. Danger close. That's within 100 meters of your position, sir. That's not a suggestion. Send it. Roger. Fire mission, danger close. So, he's coming! Get down! Get down! And with that explosion almost taking us out, we can run through a bunch of his wounded men to reach the last section of the game. Okay, so the uh, the last the last intel should literally be right here. Yeah, there it is. And this should pop the trophy for all 45 intel. There we go. Leave no stone unturned. Before chasing him in the boats, which eventually leads to a pretty clever escape on his behalf with the helicopter. After surviving a fall that should have 100% killed us, we can head to the crash site to finish this game off once and for all. There is. Get back here. Have you got to save yourself, mate? <laughs> No way. Is that, is that my fault? Is that like, is that scripted? Five years ago, I lost 30,000 men in the blink of an eye. And the world just fucking watched. Tomorrow, there will be no shortage of volunteers, no shortage of patriots. I 
I know you understand. Oh. Yeah, this game is so sick, man. It's got me a pair of one out for it, for sure. There's no way Shepard comes out on top, man. Go on, Price. Knock him one. No. I saw. I, I. I hope we throw this, man. I gotta throw a knife. Can I hand crap, man? Can let me check it, please. Let me check it, please. Yes. Right in the flipping dome. No way that's how we're leaving it though. Soap. Soap. It'll hold for now. Come on, get up. Nikolai, we've got to get soap out of here. Nah. I know a place. With the best game in the series now completed, only two trophies stood in the way of the Platinum, and the first one I decided to go for was the trophy Immortal, for beating the entire game without dying or restarting a checkpoint once. Now this sounds pretty impossible when hearing it for the first time, but this trophy is obtainable in Recruit, so I slapped on a few movies and got to work grinding through the campaign once again to earn myself the trophy. To grab the last trophy in the game, we had to visit the museum. This is a section only available after beating the game and in my opinion is a super cool and interesting way to show off all the missions and player models from the game. The trophy tied to it though is called Do Not Push This Button and it's for pushing the red button in both rooms and making it out alive. When the button is pushed, these character models come to life and you are left to defend yourself from well-known characters from the game's story. Okay, so I very much assume these are the last two guys to the Platinum. There you go, do not push this button and there we go. Is that all you got? Very easy, that one actually. I didn't realize, I, I didn't think that was gonna be that easy, so. And a new milestone as well. Now, for some odd reason, Modern Warfare 3 has yet to see a remaster to modern consoles. So this meant I had to whip out the PS3 in order to get this done. Modern Warfare 3 starts literally straight after Modern Warfare 2, with Soap still injured from the fight with Shepard. Nikolai takes us to a safe house in India, and after being rushed to the medic, we pass out and earn our first trophy of the game pretty much instantly. Just like the previous two games, we will be swapping between Task Force 141 and another team to see the war from different perspectives. In this game, we take on the role of Frost in Delta Force as we try our best to stop the Russians from taking over New York. Pretty much instantly, we are blown out of the sky and emerge from the wreckage to see the Russians relentlessly attacking the buildings around us. And this is when we are introduced to Sandman, not the guy from Spider-Man, but someone that plays a pretty important part in the story moving forward. We can fight our way through this blockade of enemies and eventually make it to the trading floor of the stock exchange building, which to be honest, wasn't as hard as I originally thought it was going to be, allowing me to defeat the enemies and finally destroy the jammer placed by the Russians. This wouldn't be the end though, as after extracting from the location, we had to defend ourselves with a turret before almost getting shot down and earning our second trophy of the game. Nice. Keeping with Frost and the Delta team, the next mission has us hijacking a Russian submarine that houses enough missiles to take out our entire front line instantly. And this mission was actually kind of challenging. It starts out with an underwater section priming the bombs on the underside of the submarine to make the sub float to the surface. And after cautiously fighting our way through the enemies on the top, make our way inside. 
After watching Sandman sweep the entire first floor, we run into this red room, which is actually pretty difficult, but I soon came to the realization that spamming prone and just shooting like your life depends on it ends up working out in your favor most of the time. Because of this, we can access the control room with Sandman and program the missiles to target the Russian sea forces instead, using their own weapons against them, which in turn leads to this super cool section that has us riding a getaway boat while all the Russian boats are being blown to pieces. Then maybe there is a oh, there you go. Returning back to Task Force 141 now, we are told that Makarov is on his way to tie up loose ends, and Nikolai suggests that someone called Yuri would be a valuable help in this situation. Yuri is someone who allegedly hates Makarov more than Price does, and is a valuable asset to have on our team, so we will be switching between him and Frost for most of the game. Now that we are playing as Yuri, we are tasked with defending Soap while the Doctor tries his best to patch him up. The Doctor does eventually get shot and Nikolai takes his place, requesting our help before Makarov's men start storming the building. Because of this, we have to escort Soap to safety while shooting down hundreds of Makarov's men. We are given the opportunity by Price to use this remote vehicle that is equipped with multiple grenades and a turret to give us the upper hand. It was pretty easy to get through the remaining enemies and get Soap to the chopper safely for Exfil. Lovely stuff. The next mission starts us off in a plane where we take on the role of a Russian agent on board the Russian president's private jet. We follow him around for a little bit before the cockpit of the plane gets breached and the entire plane begins to fall from the sky. After dealing with a few enemies, we realize that the president's daughter has gone missing and it becomes the main focus to get her back. I died multiple times during this section, but we do eventually find the president's daughter. However, before we can even celebrate, the plane takes its final dive into the ground. Luckily, the president's daughter actually survived the crash, but as you may have guessed, the president was nowhere to be seen. My original thought was that the president was taken by Makarov's men, but after clearing out the area and making my way to the other half of the plane, the president was alive and well. No way. I'm stealing the president. You know who I am? Yes. Makarov. Then you know what I want. You're insane. Russia will take all of Europe, even if it must stand up on a pile of ashes. I want the launch codes, Mr. President. You'll never get them. Every man has his weakness. Find the girl. Trophy, frequent flyer. And now starts the massive hunt for the Russian president, and more importantly, finding out exactly where Makarov is located. We return back to Yuri in Task Force 141, as he seems to have a hunch that Makarov is currently in Africa, seeing off a few special cargo shipments. To be honest, this whole mission was just defeating a bunch of enemies tied to Makarov shipments, and after reaching the end, it turns out the shipment had already been collected, and Makarov was nowhere to be seen. That was until, we are informed that an unauthorized shipment has entered the UK, presumably the same shipment we were chasing down in Africa. We are put straight into an undercover mission, sneaking through the shipment yard and taking out all the enemies in the way. We eventually make it to the tube, only to find out they somehow have a train on standby that we are required to chase down. Well, that would have killed us, mate, to be honest. After somehow making it out of this alive, we continue to push forward through the train station before making it back to the surface to witness that one infamous scene I don't think would fly on YouTube anymore. But pretty much, we failed to stop the shipments, which turned out to be chemical bombs, and in turn, a child was game ended and starts a wave of chemical attacks around Europe. These chemical attacks were strategically planned to weaken Europe's defenses, allowing Makarov to invade and capture the Vice President of America, keeping him hostage in Germany. We take back the role of Frost and head over to Germany to try and save the Vice President, which in my opinion, is one of the hardest missions in this game. It wouldn't be as hard as another mission coming up though, so for now, I push through all of the deaths to finally arrive at the room containing the Vice President. Nice, 
Welcome to World War 3. The next mission takes us to Somalia, where we are looking for a guy called Warabi, someone who apparently knows about the chemical shipments and possibly knows where Makarov is located. We do grab our first miscellaneous trophy here called Killbox for eliminating 20 enemies in a single run using the chopper gunner. Eventually, reaching the room that Warabi is believed to be in. Gas masks on. Look familiar. No, no, please. Where's Makarov? Tell me, and it's yours. Our contact with a man named Volk. We never met Makarov. Where's this Volk? Oh, Paris! He oversaw the delivery in Paris! Right then, this is for the boys at Hereford. With Volk's last location being in Paris, we prepare for Exfil, which, to be honest, made me believe this was the end of the mission. However, that was far from the case. Now that we have been ambushed, the helicopter was no longer willing to land in the area, and this meant we had to find a new location to prepare for an exfil. This wouldn't have been so hard had there have not been a massive sandstorm in the way, making it impossible for any air support to come and grab us. We tried to get picked up from the highest building in the area, but it didn't really work out too well. With Nikolai possibly dead, we head through the thickness of the sandstorm and try to avoid all contact with the enemies. Eventually, finding the crash site and, more importantly, grabbing Nikolai who is just barely holding on to life. Give me a secure line to Asset Metal Zero One. Due to Volk's last location being in Paris, we of course head to Paris in order to take him down. It seems that Paris was also hit by a chemical attack too, making the entire area contaminated, with the only way to survive being to use a gas mask. Luckily, we knew exactly where Volk was hiding because one of the other teams had already pinpointed his location. And a little bit later into the mission, we can unlock another miscellaneous trophy called Danger Close for taking out a chopper with the AC-130 air support. And after sending a few more enemies to the grave, we can head into the sewers where Volk is supposedly hiding. After passing through the catacombs and unsurprisingly dealing with more enemies, we eventually catch up to Volk and enter a car chase sequence, fending off entire tanks and armored vehicles before finally getting close enough to deal some real damage. The next mission leads straight off of this, trying our best to exfil Volk before our plane gets hit out of the sky and we become stranded in the middle of conflict. To protect Frost and a Delta Force, we take control of an AC-130 and start blowing up a few tanks, eventually earning a trophy for eliminating three tanks with a single 105mm shot. I think this mission is one of the more unique ones in the story because we are consistently swapping between Frost and the AC-130, protecting ourselves from the sky while also escorting Volt to the next extraction location on the ground. We do eventually reach the Exfil location and have to clear out the surrounding enemies in the area, which leads to the Eiffel Tower being hit in the crossfire, causing the only real reason to visit France to fall to the ground. This didn't really seem to bother the team that much though as their main focus was trying to get Volk out of Paris, eventually panning over the battlefield and earning us two trophies. Did a man talk? Needs locations. Volk gave us everything. Makarov's already making friends. He's meeting with his top advisor six hours from now. Location is the Hotel Lustig. It's in the center of the city near the old square. We have tier one groups assigned to handle this, but I don't think they'll make it in time. But you're close. Very. I'll contact you when it's done. 
since we know exactly where Makarov will be holding his meeting, the next mission has us sneaking through Prague in order to jump the mission without the Russians knowing. We start off by emerging in the water, sneaking under the docks and eventually sneaking through the streets before we meet up with Price in order to fight our way through the Russian forces towards our objective. But we eventually make it through and reach the hideout spot that we would scope out the meeting from. Price decides that the best idea is to infiltrate the room on his own, and while trying our best to cover him, we find out that Makarov was again one step ahead. Captain Price, Art Tibia. Price, get out of there! You, my friend, you never should have Who the hell is he talking about? Get out now! With Soap hanging on for dear life, we run through the crossfire, somehow only getting hit a few times, before Price takes over and it becomes our job to eliminate the enemies. I experienced multiple deaths here, but each time I died, I would learn exactly where the enemies were, and slowly but surely, kept Soap and Price alive until we reached the location that I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with. Soap! Medic! Put pressure on the wound! Price! Not now, son. Just rest. Get a medic! Come on, stay with me, son. Price. No. Makarov. Knows. Yuri. Oh, no, 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 no! So! No, no, no! Price! So! You have to go! Now! Get off me! So why in bloody hell does Makarov know you? We get to experience a flashback as Yuri that takes us back to that fabled day in Modern Warfare 1 where we tried to assassinate Zakaev. Obviously, as we know, this was a failed attempt, but it is revealed that Makarov and Yuri helped Zakaev escape the area. We then witness another cutscene that reveals Makarov was the person behind the nuke in the first game, and all of those innocent people died while they both stood and watched. And then the final cutscene plays that showcases the events during No Russian. I know what you have done, Yuri. I know what you have told them. My friend, my ally, my betrayer. What happens here today will change the world forever. Nothing can stop this. Not even you. Staying in Prague for the next mission, we are tasked with infiltrating a castle that is supposedly where Makarov is storing his weapons. The whole aim of the mission is to pretty much eliminate everyone, including his weapons. And to do this, Price places a few C4s around the castle as we move around in silence. And then we can climb up these pipes to witness exactly what Makarov is up to. I will die before I surrender the nuclear launch codes. Makarov, I see. This is what we're dealing with, brothers. A stubborn old man hopelessly out of step with the changing world. Alexei, has your intel been confirmed? Yes, sir. Our men are on the way to Berlin. Are you listening? The daughter is there. We will have her in a matter of hours. 
Merkel. find the girl, it's only a matter of time till he gives up the nuclear codes. With the president's daughter having our location compromised, we return to Frost in order to save her from being captured. On the way to our location, we can grab a miscellaneous trophy for eliminating nine enemies with A10 strafing runs. Or in other words, just eliminating every enemy you see while destroying the tanks. With this trophy out of the way, we can assist Team Granite to enter the building that supposedly holds the president's daughter. But as we've seen time and time again, Makarov is always one step ahead. This then changes the whole aim of the mission, as it is now our job to secure the president's daughter, and in doing so, rappel down the side of this building and enter probably the worst section of this entire game. Up to this point, there had been cover pretty much all over the place when it came to gunfire, so it wasn't super difficult to get through certain missions of the game. However, this singular section in this mission pretty much only gives you the cover of this tank and it wouldn't be so bad if the enemies didn't spawn literally everywhere around you. Anything you do just results in a death, and the worst part of all was that the game, for whatever reason, gave me one of the best checkpoints I could have asked for. I cannot explain to you how many attempts this took, and I died over and over and over again, just slowly making progress along this level. After a while, I ditched the tank to try another approach by going around the left, which again, resulted in multiple deaths. With each death, I did start to get further and further into the level, till eventually, after a stupid amount of attempts, we did make it to the next checkpoint. I want to say that is the most bullshit trophy I've ever done for the like, this entire game. That was literally so hard to possibly read. The rest of this mission was actually very easy, and after dealing with the remaining enemies, we approached the door that the president's daughter was believed to be behind. Now that Makarov had both the Russian president and his daughter, he was pretty much one step away from taking the launch codes and turning Europe into dust. Because of this, both Delta Force and Task Force 141 are sent into the field and we play as Yuri yet again. With an operation of this size, there would of course be a heap ton of enemies to get through in order to find Makarov. So this is exactly what we do, and to be honest, most of Makarov's men didn't really put up much of a fight. Zero one, what is your status? Have you secured the president? Negative, Overlord, but we have the girl. Now that the president's daughter had been secured, it was just the president left to locate, so we decided to head deeper into the cave. We could eliminate the enemies in the area before reaching a door that we just couldn't get through. I'm going up top, follow me. Secure. With both the president's daughter and the president now secure, we just had to wait for exfil, which was easier said than done. This felt exactly like the tank mission with the minimal cover but maximum enemy kind of situation. And what made things worse was that every time I died, the game would reset me right back before capturing the president. So I had to keep repeating this entire section over and over again. After multiple deaths, I decided to see if lying down and just waiting out the 30 seconds would work. And sure enough, the chopper came to our rescue. Oh, 
way into the hostilities. On this historic day, the representative... Who's this? Prisoner 627. I'm coming for you, Makarov. Haven't you heard, Price? They say the war is over. My war ends with you. Like it ended for Captain McTavish. Tell me, Price, how long did it take him to die? I've destroyed your world piece by piece. It's only a matter of time until I find you. You won't have to look far. With Price out for revenge after losing both Soap and Sandman to Makarov, we gear up in a juggernaut suit and go guns blazing in this building to find him. After dealing with all the enemies outside, we can head into the elevator before a chopper spots us from outside and tries its best to take us out. We do eventually take it down, but this really doesn't work out in our favor as we end up getting burnt to a crisp with no choice but to drop the juggernaut armor and head on without any protection. We push forward and before we can get close to Makarov, this happens. With Yuri impaled, we have no choice but to face Makarov alone. Unlike Modern Warfare 1 and 2's remaster, Modern Warfare 3's trophy list includes both Spec Ops and Survival, so after completing the story, I headed straight into Spec Ops. If you're unfamiliar with this mode, essentially it's just all the maps from the story filled with a bunch of bots that become more advanced based on the difficulty level. And because we were playing on Veteran, these bots have constant aimbot and are truly 10 times worse than the bots from the campaign. It also didn't help that the checkpoints are non-existent when playing on Veteran, making each death a real stab in the back on our progress. I blocked them. Wait up, no, no, no. Classic flipping Bruh. movie. <laughs> Did all that for nothing. So, to make this as fun as I could, I invited this guy along to get all the spec op missions done as smoothly as possible. The first two trophies we attempted was 50-50 for completing a spec ops game with the same number of kills as your partner and brag rights for earning our first star in spec ops. You should have 17 kills by the end. Changing back. Okay. All right. Thanks for not taking my head off. 17. Really? Rag rags. <laughs> Each mission has a total of three stars to be earned, and the only way to get all three is to play the missions on Veteran, which ties into the trophy Overachiever for earning all 48 stars. So we got to work. Starting off our first mission with a time based target practice run. The aim here is to beat the entire course in around 28 seconds. Oh, mission fails. We'll get him next time. Oh, did that. <laughs> 
Bye, Jim. <laughs> My bad. Oh, oh we got. Let's go! Let's go! Woo! Moving on, the next trophy we earn is called No Assistance for completing a Spec Ops mission without being downed. This one is surprisingly easy because the mission Firewall requires you both to stay alive the entire time, as one person mans a turret and another person stays alive on foot. Should get trophy. Yes. Stuff. Lovely stuff. Now, because these Spec Ops missions are based entirely off the maps on the campaign, there isn't much else to see when it comes to new areas or features. But because the AI was harder than the actual campaign, it did cause us to play a little bit differently. This particular mission now has us hunting intel from ways of enemies, and this truly was one of the hardest Spec Ops missions in the game. Not only is there a stupid amount of enemies being able to lock onto you at any given moment, but there's also multiple dogs that will spawn in at the worst times, giving you a button prompt that never actually works. And then I opened my third can of monster. Put that monster down. We eventually got the hang of it and slowly made our way through. And then in the next mission, I unlocked another trophy for stabbing five people in a row. Yeah, oh, I got it. I got Jack the Ripper. Well, well. Now that most of the Spec Ops trophies had been earned, the only two that remained were Tactician for earning one star in every mission, and as mentioned earlier, Overachiever for earning three stars in every mission. So we got to work clearing up the rest of the Spec Ops journey, and it really did not go down without a fight. We had to do another stealth mission in the streets of Prague. There was a mission where we literally start off being bombed to pieces by enemy vehicles, surviving a wave of enemies in a small room, facing a juggernaut, and then somehow making it back to the surface all without dying once. And probably the most tedious one of them all, the final mission to wrap up these Spec Ops challenges once and for all. This one is hard for numerous reasons, but I would say the main reason is literally down to how many enemies spawn in. I don't have the perspective from the other player, but essentially, they're in an AC-130 trying to eliminate as many enemies as possible, so that I can reach this room in the middle to disable the anti-air defenses. But even after doing all of this, I still have to somehow make it to this container without being shot, disable the security lock on the main entrance, and then pray to the Call of Duty devs that I will be able to run across the length of this entire map without dying. How long do you get for that bit? 30 seconds. Just gonna have to sprint then. This was probably the mission that we ended up spending the most time on, but all of our prayers were answered when I finally reached the gate for the trophies. Sorry, right, it's literally so hard to tell what's a car, mate. Like, it comes out as a bigger box here, but I can't, like, right, see right, if right. I've actually got it. Yes, go. Yeah, let's go. You have the trophy then? Dactician. Well, you got it? Yes. Yeah. I didn't. Get, get fucked if you didn't, mate. <laughs> In my brum. What's tactician? Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. What do you mean you got tactician? Oh, I got it, over overachiever. Yeah, mine, mine popped yeah, out after, I think. With Spec Ops now finished, we could head into survival to clean up most of the remaining trophies. This game mode, in my opinion, is extremely boring. And even with another person to chill and grind the missions with, each one was still taking a solid 15 to 20 minutes to complete, with 90% of the gameplay just being to sit in a corner and make it to wave 15 without dying. If you don't know what survival is, it's pretty much zombies, but with bots instead. And on certain rounds, there will be other enemies that spawn in, like juggernauts or dogs. On the first survival map we played, I managed to grab the trophy Serrated Edge for eliminating a juggernaut with a knife. Oh, is that a trophy? I did it. Wait a minute, mate. Nice. This was also the same game I unlocked the trophy for surviving the first wave on any map, but I forgot to hit record and I missed the trophy pop. Moving on a few hours into the survival grind, we can unlock the trophy defense spend for buying every item from the survival equipment armory. These armories are just little shops in the game, and there's one for survival, air support, and weapons, all of which have their own dedicated trophies that we didn't realize until this very moment. I got the right shirt, so I should get a trophy, I suppose. You ready, Yeah, I got it, yeah. The good thing about testing this trophy out right now was that most of the stuff from the survival armory had been purchased in previous survival games. This meant that we could progressively work on the other two shop trophies while playing the remaining survival maps. And that's exactly what we did. Wherever possible, we would purchase weapons and score streaks to make these trophies easier for ourselves a bit later. While working on these trophies, I accidentally got the trophy birdie for shooting down two choppers without getting hit. Like try and get him from this thing instead. I got it, I got birdie, man. And then a few survival missions later, we decided to keep all of our money and go for the trophy Get Rich or Die Trying for having an accumulative balance of $50,000. Now, I don't really know how this works on solo, but if you're playing with someone else, you can earn 25k each and then just transfer the money to each other, which makes this grind a whole lot easier. Right, where well, you got all my money now. Please. Nice. Please. 
With pretty much every survival trophy out of the way, we headed into the last survival map to grab the trophies for getting to wave 10 and wave 15 on every map. Yeah. I didn't even get it, but why are you popping so early? So, I got it, yeah. Now, you may be wondering where the two trophies are for buying every item in the game, and it turns out a lot of these items are locked behind the leveling system, which the guide on PSM profiles fails to mention. To purchase every item in the game, we need to be level 50 or max level, and after beating every Spec Ops and survival map in the game, I was only level 40. So, we eventually came across an XP method that saves a ton of time and requires you to load up the AC 130 Spec Ops mission with a second controller and just farm the same route over and over again. This is by far the easiest way to level up and even with this method we were still doing this for a solid two and a half hours before finally reaching level 50. So with the level barrier no longer being an issue we could grab the last air support item oh, that's danger zone. Right, cool. and then also grab the last weapon I needed for the trophy arms dealer. Hopefully. Not popping yet mate. Let's go, I got it, I got it, I got it. Nice. So with Spec Ops, Survival, and Campaign done, the only thing standing in the way of the Platinum was to grab all the remaining intel in the campaign and do a few of the miscellaneous trophies that I had missed during my first playthrough. After booting up the campaign once again, we can grab a miscellaneous trophy on the first mission for eliminating 30 enemies with the XM25. Uh, I got it. We can grab another trophy here for blowing up five enemies with a single grenade. I got it. And a bit later into the same mission, there is an opportunity to shoot down five helicopters, which of course earns us another trophy. With only two more miscellaneous trophies left, we can eliminate five enemies during the zero gravity section of turbulence and eliminate every enemy in this section using only four mortar shells. Nice before grabbing the remaining intel to finish the last game in the Modern Warfare trilogy. There right, here we go. 46 out of 46. Scout leader. All in. There we go. I have to say, this trilogy did surprise me quite a bit, and looking back on it now, I really did have a lot of fun while attempting these Platinums. The remasters of Modern Warfare 1 and 2 look amazing, and really bring new life to such a classic game, which makes it such a shame that Modern Warfare 3 has yet to receive the same treatment, because the game is just as good as the other two, and truly deserves a remaster of its own. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, I can only assume this is going to be on the longer side, so I appreciate every single one of you that has made it this far, and if you're looking for something else to binge watch, then the channel has plenty of videos pushing that one hour mark if you're interested. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll be sure to see you all in the next one. Bye bye!